Hi, Judy from Witchby Scraft. Welcome to my yarn adventure for Thursday, the 24th of December. Yes, I'm back. I'm up early. It's about 7.30. I'm having coffee and I thought I would do 20 Christmas questions tag that was started, as far as I know, by Ella at No Catchy Name. So here goes. Question one. Favourite Christmas movie? White Christmas with Bing Crosby. Filmed in 1954. Love it. Got to watch it every year. Closely followed by Polo Express, but definitely White Christmas. Are you on the naughty list or the nice list? I would like to think I'm a nice person. I'm on the nice list. But if Santa could read my mind sometimes, what's going on here and doesn't come out here, because I'm a little smarter than that, would put me high on the naughty list. Question three, use one noise to describe how excited you are for Christmas. I don't get overly excited now the boys are older and there aren't grandchildren um, and I don't get excited or get Christmas spirit until about the 12th of December because of personal family reasons. But there is one noise that makes me know it's Christmas and it's coming fast and it's bells. Actually, these are two bells. I bought in China and I, I've got it written down so I can't remember what the blue means and the red. It was my trip to China, but bells. One, because when the boys were crying up, the funny things my brother and Polish brother-in-law used to do with the bells to make the kids run around crazy. And two, when I walk around shopping centres and hear bells, I know it's Christmas or before when jingle bells starts on the radio, it's the bells. So the ringing of little Christmas bells. Question four, have you ever had a white Christmas? Yes, my parents immigrated from England when I was eight years old. I do remember trudging through the snow to visit my grandparents around the corner. Um, yes, I, I would love an adult white Christmas. The colder, the better. Do you start your Christmas shopping on Black Friday or wait till the last minute? In the past, I generally shop all year. If there's something on sale that will make a great Christmas present, I buy it and put it away because I'm a frugal and thrifty person. However, that didn't happen this year. I totally went out the window. I didn't buy much at all throughout the year. But Black Friday sales remind me Christmas is coming. I didn't buy a lot from Black Friday sales, but I did start Christmas shopping. Question six, if you could be in any Christmas movie, what would it be? Well, of course, White Christmas in a sleigh with Bing Crosby riding through the snow. That would be a dream come true. Question seven, name all of Santa's reindeer. This is going to test me. Rudolph, Dasher, Prancer, Vixen, Blitzen, Comet. Oh, I give up. I'm not that great at the... Northern Hemisphere around here. There goes the plane. It's been busy this morning. That's probably what woke me up. Um, because when Santa gets to Australia, he arrests the reindeer and he hooks up six white boomers, six big white kangaroos, and he flies Australia with us around Australia delivering presents to the kids with his six white boomers. Now, everyone in Australia obviously can't agree on names, but I've, I've known them for quite a few years as Jackaroo, Curly, Two Up, Desert Head, Snow, and Bluey. Six white boomers. There is a Christmas carol, and it's Aussie CD of Christmas carols by Bucko and Chance with a, theme, with a Christmas carol, Six White Boomers. It's on YouTube. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It is a bit tongue-in-cheek and there are some other great Christmas carols. But this, when the boys were like teenagers, I used to get up really early and put that CD on really loud and blast them out of bed and they go, oh, mum. I'd say, this is payback for when you were little and used to wake us up. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. Um... Question eight, when does your family put up your Christmas tree and who decorates it? Well, my family tradition, and I've carried it through into my family, the 6th of December, and I decorate it with the peanut gallery sitting and watching and offering, help, offering helpful suggestions that are totally ignored. 
So yes, when the kids were little, they used to help me, but not not so much anymore. It's more of, oh, maybe you should put that there or it would look better there. And I go, yeah, yeah, nah. Um, is your Christmas tree real or fake? It's fake. Um, the one I have is about 80 centimetres high and 15 years old and probably too overloaded with ornaments. I'm worried it's going to topple. Um, I don't put up a big tree because there are no little kids around at Christmas here. But I do have a six foot fake Christmas tree in storage. I can't be bothered getting out. And I have had real Christmas trees in the past, but they do make a mess. It's the mess I can't stand. Um, maybe next year I might buy a slightly bigger tree, maybe 1.2 metres and replace this one so I can put more ornaments on it. Picking it gives or be surprised. I am a notorious picker, feeling, trying to guess. That is why Thing and the boys do not put any presents under my tree until very late on Christmas Eve. They won't let me look. And my Polish brother-in-law used to say, you can open a present after the first star appears on Christmas Eve. And they wouldn't even let me do that. They are so mean. I hope they're on the naughty list. I'll just have a coffee. I'm getting croakier. Thing is out. He's gone to the seafood monger to pick up our seafood that we're going to have for dinner tonight. Um, it's funny. Our seafood monger's name is, surname is Adams, and everyone calls him Grizzly Adams. But, yeah, he's gone out really early to go and pick it up to beat the, the traffic. They're having brain farts. I'll explain brain farts at the end. Um, what holiday traditions are you looking forward to most this year? I started a tradition which my mother used to do. Was There was always a trifle. I'm not sure if you know what trifle is in the USA and Canada, but I'll put a recipe, the, the basic original trifle, in the link below. Um, make a note, trifle recipe, I'll forget. I make a trifle. I used to make the traditional sherry trifle that mum made. But as the boys have got older, we've got into experimenting and someone gets to pick what the trifle will be. Um, Thing picked tiramisu one year. Last year we did lemon meringue trifle because I like lemon meringue. This year, Reeves wants brownies. This concoction trifle recipe, which is brownies and strawberry coolie and chocolate mousse and raspberries and a bit of cream. Um, yeah. I like making the trifle this year because Reeves is the brownie king. He'll make the brownies when he gets up today and we'll start assembling the trifle later. I'll be making the chocolate mousse and different things. It does have alcohol in it if you want. It has Cointreau. I'm allergic to Cointreau. If I put any alcohol, it'll be something different. Uh, question 12. If you could be under the mistletoe with anyone, who would it be? It, this year, it would have to be my eldest son in London. I would love to be under the mistletoe, giving him a big hug and a kiss and messing around. Um, I'm fairly certain he will be spending Christmas Day alone, um, which won't bother him. He's, he's quite um, mentally well-adjusted. His partner will still be in France. So, yes. Um, I miss him and I'd love to be under the mistletoe with him. Uh, question 13. Does your family have a special holiday recipe? Ah, the trifle. Whatever trifle we decide. That's sort of same as question 11 for me. Have you ever gone Christmas caroling? When I was young in England, but people... And friends in Australia pay me not to sing. And caroling's not big over here. Question 15. What atops your tree? Well, every year, for years, it's a little blue, raggedy-looking angel. But this year, because earlier in the year, my friend Ulia made me a polar bear face with a hat, the party polar bear, and I um, made him into a Christmas ornament, and he sits atop. Of my tree this year. What is your favourite Christmas song? I have two and they're not Christmas carols, they are actually songs. 
One is Driving Home for Christmas by Chris Rea. We um, did do that one year. It was a lot of fun when the kids were little. We were in WA and we stayed in Coral Bay. It was lovely. And the other is John Lennon's So This Is Christmas. Um, I love the Beatles, all of them. And I love So This Is Christmas by John Lennon. If I can find it on YouTube, there'll be links for those. So it's Christmas songs. Better make a note, I might forget. Question 17, what is your all time favorite holiday food or sweet? Well, it's quality street chocolates that come in a tin. However, it's not the quality street that you get in supermarkets in Australia. The chocolate tastes funny. It's the quality street that comes from the UK in London or England. Their Cadbury's chocolate or Nestle chocolate, the chocolate's different. It's so much nicer. There is a shop in our shopping centre called All Sorts Sweet Shops that gets everything they possibly can from all over the world, Tootsie Rolls, Reese's Cups from America. They get Twizzlers in. Reeves, my son, younger son, loves cherry Twizzlers. Absolutely adores them, but they're hard to get. He's still asleep. I had to get orange Twizzlers. It was the only flavour the lady could get. She knows I'm coming in and she puts a packet away for me. She was really apologetic. She couldn't get cherry, but he'll like them anyway. Now, if you're in the USA or Canada where you can get Twizzlers, have a seat. Because I'm about to tell you what I pay for a packet. And you're going to go, <gasps> I pay $11 for a packet of Twizzlers. I know that's expensive because friends in the US have said, you're crazy. But yeah, we do up like um, not so much Christmas stocking fillers, but I started a tradition where they have what I call their lolly treat bag. It's like a little Christmas um gift bag and I put treats in there. In Reeves there's usually jerky. He loves jerky and yeah Queensland's famous for its jerky. I'm not even sure I could post it overseas to anyone who liked it. I have to check with the ladies at the mail office. He likes all flavours from mild to flaming hot burn your mouth out. But yeah there's usually jerky. Um, Jaffa rolls from the UK. He likes those. Twizzlers. It'd be a sad Christmas if he didn't have Twizzlers and other stuff he likes. But it's not a lot. It's just a nice sweet treat. In things, there's usually really dark, good quality chocolate. Sometimes chilli chocolate because he likes flaming hot, hot jerky. Here comes another plane. Sorry, guys. Um, there is usually his favourite sweet treat is chocolate-coated almonds and some sort of little alcohol thing that he can add to his port barrel like um, a musket or a sherry quality because he does this port barrel blend that he likes to have a little glass of at night he says it helps him sleep uh, where were we got a bit off track what would be your dream place to visit for the holiday season um, Berlin Christmas and New Year in Berlin I believe is absolutely beautiful and awesome. I'd like to be there with all my family, including my oldest son. My oldest son has traveled quite a bit, but he said Berlin was number one. But then he said he hasn't done New York at Christmas and he believes that's really awesome too. But yeah, Berlin, I think it'd be great because they have these great Christmas markets and I love a good market. Question 19, is there a gift you're excited about giving this year and who is it to? The, the piece of artwork I sent to my son in London, I did take a photo of it. He's got it. I did let him unwrap it. I think you have to be Australian to get the humour in this. Um, it's actually painting. It's not a print. It's actual artist is in um, New South Wales in Sydney. It's... And I'll explain, but I don't think you'll get the joke. It's a bit of history. So there's Captain Sturt in WA taking a pee on a flower in Western Australia, which is now named the Sturt Pea, and there's Indigenous people around him. Being a teacher, my oldest son would love that. He just sought the humour out. This artist, the place in Coranda where I got it, up the Tablelands, 
had different ones from this artist. There was this one about eBay and the internet and Gumtree that re, uh, that thing really liked, cracked him up. And there was one I liked, which was the mobile phone in Australia, which was a big telephone box on the back of a trailer with a hot, with a ute towing it out in the bush and the Indigenous people waiting around to make a phone call on the mobile phone. Yeah, it, that's, it was awesome buying it. I knew he'd love it. And, yeah, he now has some artwork on one of those very empty hooks in his apartment, his new apartment. Oh. What is the best gift you ever got for Christmas? Well, I like it because I took the photo. I, um, for my 50th, went to the Arctic. I may have mentioned it in another video. And I took a, a series of rapid shots of a juvenile polar bear on an ice floe. Um, he was quite thin and a biologist who was talking about it said he probably would die unless he started hunting better. He obviously wasn't hunting well. He was quite young. And unbeknownst to me, Reeves, my son, who's a graphic designer and a bit of a photography buff, took three of those shots and arranged it so it looks like a, an ice wave and had them framed, very expensively framed. I get to see that every day because it now hangs above the TV in the alcove and I sit opposite it and it is awesome. I know when I opened it, I think I cried every time I looked at it. I just love it and it was just such a thoughtful gift that I hadn't a clue he was doing. So that's it, 20 Christmas questions. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about us down under because it's hot and we do weird things. We are weird people just like everywhere else in the world. Um, I'm going to tag a few people. So um, if they haven't done it yet, my favourite Canadian couple, Karen Pruden at Let's Stitch and Makeup and Robert, and of course Hugo. I have Hugo there for me to look at. But yeah, you guys are tagged in the 20 Christmas questions. Mel from Colours of the Outback in WA. You can do it in your new craft room. You don't have to do it with your partner. You can do it like me. Um, and um, do the 20 Christmas questions. Let's learn a bit more about you. And um, Squish from Say It from with Squishy Yarn. I know you haven't made videos lately, Squish, and um, are taking a bit of a break, um, which saddens me because we've emailed. And I hope you get back on the bike and make a video and do the 20 questions Christmas tag. Um, you don't have to be on camera. You could just hold the list of questions or have your favourite polar bear sitting opposite you if you have one. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing and to all those new subscribers. I hope you stick around for 2021. Um, and yeah, I love doing this. I think it was fun. It gets you thinking about memories, the things you do automatically. So today, so today being Christmas Eve, the thing picks up the seafood. He would have done this with me, but he, he can barely be heard with his throat. Um, yeah, we do cooking and prep today. I, yeah, we'll be making parts of the trifle and prepping vegetables because Christmas Day I just want to basically whack it in an oven or a Weber or, and serve it up. I don't want to have to be exhausted on Christmas Day and I can pace myself today and I can crochet a bit in between. So thank you for watching. Until next time, I hope your family have a very Merry Christmas. Stay safe, stay well and take care of each other. Bye for now. Oops, I forgot. I was supposed to explain what a brain fart is. Um, I sort of thought it was common but apparently not. Some people didn't understand what I meant. So a brain fart is when you lose all common sense, all sense of reasoning and your brain starts to build with the air. You rant and rave at people when you should be speaking nicely. You bully people, you harass people and then you suddenly just explode and your brain farts and you shite on someone's day, unbeknownst to why you just ruin their day and upset them. I believe last week on 
Tom Cruise on the set of Mission Impossible 7 had a brain fart. He was going off his nut at the crew for not following COVID rules. I understand people have to follow COVID rules, but for God's sake, you don't need to lose your bottle over it and rip into people. Um, it upset me last week. I mean, I watched Dana, Dana's Wanderlust Crochet and she started a second channel, Dana and Two Ponies, about life and the crap she copped at Walmart because of the mask. There is no need for it. And if you feel a brain fart coming on, then I suggest you go outside, smell the roses, take some deep breaths and listen to the birds and calm down. Because the last thing you wanna do is shite on someone unsuspecting person's day and ruin their day. Um, I don't know, people are in such a hurry shopping, they drive like crazy and the air's building in their brain and then they do something stupid and you know you've had a brain fart. Um, keyboard warriors, I just love them. They must have a brain fart every day and they hide behind their keyboard and they bully people and they say nasty things. Sometimes it's easy to say block and delete and ignore but there's always that one that sneaks under the radar and hits a nerve, and that really annoys me. So for me, it's better to stay home <laughs> because I'm go if they have a brain fart, I will have her Naroshma brain fart and really go off at them because I hate it. You just stay calm and crochet like Teresa Patton says. Stay calm and crochet. Knit if you have to. <laughs> Guys, that's what a brain fart is. Thanks for watching. Bye.